to do. Okay, let's make some noise. We're celebrating 30 years of Essence. Come on. Now, every year of Essence is special to me. I'm telling y'all, it's like a holiday to me. Outside of Christmas, for real, it's my favorite time of year. But this year, it's super duper special and unlike any other. It's the 30th anniversary, y'all. Essence Fest is grown, grown, you hear me? This festival is the definition of a black excellence. Am I right? Okay, it brings black people from all over the world together under one roof to join in community, lift up each every, lift each other up, that's what the cards say, and have a good time. And are we having a good time today? Let's take some time to acknowledge the people who made all of this possible. Make some noise for Essence's VP of Content, Nandy Howard. Make some noise, y'all. Thank you, LaToya, my Houston hottie. Yeah, baby. <laughs> H-Town. Hello, everyone. Y'all have to work with me. My voice is gone. I've been hosting for three days. But I am Nandi Howard, the Vice President of Content for Essence. And we are celebrating 30 years of Essence Festival. Can we give it up? So for three decades, this event has been a pillar in the black community, and it was all made possible by these people I'm about to bring out. Please welcome co-founder of Essence Magazine, Ed Lewis, the editor at large of Essence Magazine, Mickey Taylor, and the former mayor of New Orleans, Mark Murray Al, and current mayor of New Orleans, Latoya Contrell. Let's give it up for them. Yes. <laughs> Get this conversation started. First of all, we're sitting amongst some legends right now. Can we give it up? So I'm just gonna get right, right into it. Mr. Lewis, so my first question for you is, you co-founded Essence Magazine more than 50 years ago with the vision and mission of creating a magazine for black women. Can you take us back in time and tell us about the early days of the publication? In 19 I think it's working. Can you hear me? 19, yeah. In 1968, there was a lot of turmoil in the country. Martin Luther King was killed, Bobby Kennedy, riots in Chicago, Democratic Convention. And so there was a desire to get young blacks into business, helping to start businesses. And I was fortunate to be at a meeting in 1960 at an investment banking home that had the vision to help young blacks to try to start something. And I met my partners with the idea of us bringing a magazine into the world that would talk about the beauty and intelligence of black women. That's how we started in 1968. I love that. Yes. Give it up for that. Yes. Now, Ed and Mark, you were also, you both were instrumental as well as Mickey in launching the first Essence Festival in 1995, right here in New Orleans. At the time, Mr. Morial was the mayor of the city. I wanna hear just all three of your perspectives about the beginning of this event. Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon all. Well, Ed Lewis, Susan Taylor and George Ween walked into my office. Ed Lewis was impeccably attired. <laughs> yes. And I had not met Ed prior to that, but I, I knew Susan and George Ween. And Ed said, we have a vision for a three-day concert series, and we want to do it here at the Louisiana Superdome to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Essence Magazine. I immediately, you know, I as mayor, I said, yes. <laughs> what do we need to do? And Essence was born at that moment. It was a moonshot, a three-day indoor festival over the 4th of July weekend when it is hot and humid right here in New Orleans. Yep. And, uh, but the importance was there had never been uh, a festival that was designed to celebrate African-American women. This was not a festival 
brought to you by a beer company yep. or a tobacco company or a commercial organization. It was brought to you by Essence Magazine, yep. which at that time was on the coffee table or the kitchen table of every black family in America, like Jet and Ebony Magazine. So right. we should give Ed a big round of applause yes. for making yes. it happen and for choosing this city, and I have to say this, I want to thank Mayor Cantrell yep. because she took the baton and she has worked to make it bigger and better than ever. And yes. so that continuity yes. is really important in thinking about why has this survived now for 30 years. And Mark, how this came about in 1994, I was having drinks with George Wien talking about my upcoming 25th anniversary in, in 1995, I want to do something a little bit different than having a big party in New York, thanking all the advertisers. And George Wien said to me, Ed, have you ever thought about doing a music festival in New Orleans at the Superdome on the 4th of July weekend? I said, no. I said, but it's an intriguing idea. Why don't you come to my office, make a presentation to my key people. They were lukewarm about it. As a CEO, I made the decision to do it, and that's why we're here today. Yes. That's right. And you know, I want to just add to that. Yes, yes. That first year, we infused $1 million into New Orleans in 1995. That first year. And so it really showed the power of the culture and the power of the magazine. The next year, and I remember in 1996, Ed, you wrote a, an editorial called Standing Our Ground, because at that point, we were dropping 75 million. Yes, in New give Orleans. it up for that. In a, one year's time. One year's time. And so, you fast forward that now. Uh, yeah, exactly. 30 America. years later, mm -hmm. the impact is over $300 million. Hello. 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 Yes. Yes. That's right. And Mayor Cottrell, I wanted to ask you as the first black mayor of New Orleans, what does essence mean to you? Well, Mark is a black man. <laughs> first black woman I, there. I, I, first woman mm -hmm. in his 300-year right. history. And so a real responsibility to keep the legacy going. Right. And that's what the continuity of leadership is all about, which you heard my brother mayor speak to. Yep. And so a lot of times, and sometimes in these positions, you get in there to keep it going, to make it better, so that it gets better with time. And that's what the Essence Festival of Culture has done in this city. Absolutely. And I wanted to follow with that because you spoke on the economic and cultural impact of Essence, but for you, how have you seen it grow since you have been mayor? Significantly relative to the local, I would say, community. Yep. Um, embracing the culture holistically for the city of New Orleans. But this year alone, you can see a thousand percent relative to our cultural community being embedded in all of the attractions. And that's something that we're excited about. Even last year when we put forth the, the uh, market, yep. it was outdoor. But now, hey, that's all, it's in the e convention center. Exactly. And that is our local small businesses right here in our city that I have to that. thrive too. I love that. Mm -hmm. Now, Mickey, I have to come to you. We were backstage. I used to be the fashion editor at Essence. You are a very, inspir a big inspiration to me. And we were talking about BeautyCon yes. and you working with those beauty brands um, when you first started and now seeing all of the beauty brands in the convention center. How does that feel for you? Oh, it makes me, you know, the truth of the matter is, let me not, let me not say how it makes me feel. Let me tell you, Webster really won't help me define how it makes me feel. Right. Because I can remember being in the fight when black women were invisible, when we were through the 80s and the 90s and trying to help beauty companies understand that if you want to reach black women, you've got to be where they are and that's on the pages of Essence. Right. So when I fast forward and I see a marketplace at the festival that has grown to multiple city blocks, where when we first started in 1995, we were all in the Superdome and it was just a, a real small, marketplace, a few shops, something to do. And in fact, the empowerment seminars, people stood, they were on the upper level where the super lounges are. People stood to hear the word, to hear the assignment that they were to take back into the community. Now we've got multiple stages and partners yep. and brilliant minds and 
all of what started around a conference room table with a vision to change the trajectory of our future. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's a blow up at best. My, my mind can't, I can't get my mental arms around it, but yeah. I'm just so proud mm -hmm. to have made a difference. Yeah, that's enough for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. awesome, I love that. Now, Mr. Morial, you served as a mayor until 2002, so you saw the festival grow in its earlier years. What was it like to see the event get bigger every year? Uh, you know, it's been a joy. Year one, all of the activities took place in the dome. And there were daytime thought leadership panels like this in the dome because the dome has four large ballrooms. After the first year, uh, Ed and I, and when we talked, I said, think about moving the daytime activities to the convention center. Uh, and, and, and so uh, just to give a plug, this convention center, the Ernest and Morial Convention Center, is named after my father, uh, who was the city's first yeah. African-American yeah. mayor. Yep, yep. Uh, and it's because he built this, but it's important that five of the last six mayors of this city have been African-American. Yep. Uh, and that continuity. So I want to lift this up. From the beginning, Ed's vision was a party with a purpose. Right. Yep. It was very important to Essence and its readers and its followers that this not just be about fun, that it be about uh, filling our souls, inspiring our minds, educating us, empowering us for the work that we had. And that is what has made this so unique. You could go to Coachella, you could go to South by Southwest, you can go to concerts for every great artist, love me some Beyonce, et cetera, but nowhere are you gonna find a combination of multiple genres of black music, yeah. from R&B, soul, to all strands of hip hop, along with a daytime level of engagement on this level. So, we're going to continue to give you love and respect, Ed, because the vision, Absolutely. all the rest of us did is help execute. And for me, it meant really sometimes squeezing and twisting the city's hospitality community uh, to understand the value proposition and why they had to invest uh, in essence. And now it is a foregone, because this is one of the city's big five events that take place every year. Absolutely, yeah. and I will say it's not so much uh, far gone that we have to continue to demonstrate our economic impact because our spin is valuable. And if we recall when even Essence started, you would look at Canal Place and the like, they didn't want you to come in there, wait a minute. And then when we showed up, when they had a DJ at the Mac counter, I said, oh, we've arrived. Exactly. You know, so, so our spin is significant. We had to do an economic impact study a couple of years ago to prove to the state that their investment needed to continue. And while we were being told, oh no, the money isn't there, and even the city administration had to find, and it was a but for yeah. when we were going through this several years ago. So we always have to be mindful that we have to continue to lift one another up, understand who we are, love ourselves, and our economic impact, it matters in this city, in this state, but in this country. So I would say New Orleans is the best city to host. We're the most Afrocentric city in the United States of America. All black people from the South. And of course, when we think about the mecca of collaboration, that's what you all have created. Thank you. Thank you. You know, Mark and Mayor Contro, in 1996, we almost didn't come back because the then governor, Robert Foster, mm -hmm. made a decision to eliminate all affirmative action programs for the state of Louisiana. I'm a big proponent, supporter of affirmative action. So I made it clear that I was not coming back to New Orleans. The lieutenant governor called me uh, um, and she asked if I would be willing to meet the new governor. I said I would and I got Hugh Price, who was in the Urban League uh, president, who's also going to hold a convention here uh, uh, in the next two weeks, we decided to come to Baton Rouge, meet the, new, uh, meet the governor, 
and I told the governor I wanted to find affirmative action. I said, there's one of our great entertainers. His name is James Brown. And he had lyrics, open the door. And all I ask, that the door be open. Once the door's open, you don't have to do anything for me. But if you close the door, I'm going to fight you tooth and nail. Got him to modify his edict put to permit us to come back. I lost over a million dollars because people thought we were not coming back to New Orleans. But it was the principle that I wanted to stand for that make sure that we upheld in coming back to New Orleans. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. And, and you know, Ed, I remember you taking that stand. And, I, and it made me think, I always say, when God gives you a platform, don't run backstage. You really have to know your power. And I, I, I have been proud of you on so many occasions, but that was one of them where you could just feel it all through the halls at Essence that a decision has been made. Right, and right. now, and we're going to make it count. Yep. Yeah. And Mickey, I wanted to follow up because you see so many of the beautiful women walking through here with their fashions, yes. inspired by the pages of Essence Magazine, and that was heavily influenced by you. And we spoke backstage about black women not always being at the forefront, but making sure that the magazine was a cultural impact moment. So can you speak to the magazine and the correlation between that and the festival? So again, if you look at our genesis, again, Essence was the only magazine of its type talking directly to black women about every aspect of, it li of its life lives and it continues and so being beauty and cover director at that desk for 30 years being in the trenches on behalf of us and and you know i was the inconvenient truth at boardrooms we were the invisible women for many years companies didn't want to advertise in the magazine but they wanted our dollars you know they wanted to know if they could get away with three foundations for us while they had 30 for women of, of, Af of, that weren't of African descent. And I was like, no. And, and I've had advertisers tell me, well, we don't need to advertise in essence because sex sells. Really, you're gonna play us like that. Or that it would taint the brand if they advertise in essence, but you don't hesitate to take the dollars. And so we fought, and no, we're not gonna write about you and help you deceive the culture because we're just not playing those games. Exactly. And we refuse to be the invisible women. And on my exactly. watch, That's I right. knew every boardroom I walked into, I had, at that time, in 1985, I had 14 million black women behind me. That was more than enough. So to be here today and to see we have presenting sponsors and corporate sponsors yeah. and we've got BeautyCon and we've got more products to choose from than we could ever imagine. I mean, if you think about it, when I started, the amount of products that work for us could fit in the span of my two arms. That says a lot. That says a lot. And now they're leaving with trunks yeah. of stuff. That, that's <laughs> right. That's exactly right. So this is a force to be reckoned with. We are a force to be reckoned with. Definitely. Well, we have to say we thank you for fighting in those beauty spaces for us because now we're seen. So to wrap up, I want to hear from each of you on your thoughts of Essence's legacy and future. What is your hopes for Essence Festival? Well, one is that the Essence Festival continues yep. uh, to be in the city of New Orleans and continues to fill our cup. It is a family reunion. Yes, it is. It really is. And of course, empowering black women, but black families. And when you do that, you bring everyone along. And so I'm just inspired by the legacy and wanting to make sure that I leave it better than I found it. Come and on now. keep it going. Absolutely. So thank you all for your leadership. Thank you. What about you, Mr. Mark Moran? 30 more. Yeah. Come on now. Yes, yes. 30 more. Yes. Give it up for 30 more. Give it up yeah. for 30 more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have seen the evolution with uh, the Film Fest, the Global Economic Forum. In many respects, this has become a Davos for black women. Y'all know Davos? That's where all the big money players go to Switzerland each year. This, in many respects, has become a must attend. Yes. Uh, and we want to continue, I think, continue to grow it. Yes. You know, in that fashion. Uh, so that, uh, and, and I think that what's beautiful about this is it's cross-generational. My 18-year-old daughter is here. There are black women here, there are people from the community here literally from 18 to 80. Mm -hmm. uh, and to create an event that has such broad appeal is indeed challenging. It's difficult. So this is what you have to learn. Don't 
fix what ain't broken. That's right. Keep it going. Keep it going. Yes. Yeah. What yeah. about you, Mickey? I, listen, 30 more years of excellence, absolutely. Global impact. But what I will say, in, in the empowerment seminars were billed as the sojourn for the soul. We are in the fight of our lives in this era, right here and now, where they're trying to erase everything about us. Let's take the tools that we're learning here and take them back into the community. Let's black up the polls, as Al Sharpton said, and let's make this count because we are in the fight of our lives and we refuse to lose. Amen? Amen. What Amen. about you, Mr. Lewis? What's your hope for Essence Festival? There's a word that I would like to say that we don't use very often, and that is to thank you. Thank all of you, all yes. the people over the years, all the members of Essence who came together to bring something into the world to service the beauty and intelligence of black women. And I hope that we can continue doing that, and Essence will continue to treasure black women and make sure to let them continue to know you have the power to make a difference, to change the world. Let's use it. Let's make sure that we vote because we have the most important election coming up. Yes, we do. This year. That's what I want. Thank you. Well, I have to say you four are inspirations to continue the festival for the next 30 years. So I would like to say thank you for being here and thank you for your participation. Can we give it up for these four legends, please? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Take off the